Computer, who is at Robbie on the Cube? Here's something I found on Wikipedia. Cecilia and Robbie were never reunited. Robbie died of septicemia at Dunkirk on the morning of the day he was to be evacuated, and Cecilia drowned months later in the Ballam tube station bombing during the Battle of Britain. What? Hello and welcome back to NAS Compares. Today, of course, I want to talk about Amazon Alexa and whether it works and how well it works with your QNAP NAS. Now, I've done lots of testing in the background. I'm going to keep this video as short as possible to give you a better understanding about this device and your QNAP NAS. Now, whether you bought a NAS um, already and you bought the Amazon Alexa to work with your system or you um, already bought the Amazon Alexa and now you're thinking about buying a QNAP NAS so you can you know synchronize with it and access those files I've got some good news and I've got some bad news for you but before we start the more astute of you may have noticed that I've mentioned the word Alexa about 15,000 times and this thing hasn't woke up just for the purpose of this video I have changed the default command so for example computer what time is it the time is 10.17 a.m. There you go. See, just for the purpose of that, it's a bit Star Trek, you know, kind of star date, whatever. But um, straight away, a number of you that have got hold of an Alexa, maybe over Christmas, apparently they sold absolutely loads of them, straight away came across the biggest stumbling block um, with regard to playing, for example, your music. Because at the moment with QNAP, there is no way to get the Alexa to access the music on your QNAP NAS uh, directly and play it via the wonderful speakers that this thing arrives with. Because the Amazon Echo there, the, you know, the speakers that it has are fantastic. Um, now, straight away, this was a big bummer for me. I thought that, you know, that it would work straight away out of the box. I know Synology have something out there already, but unfortunately, QNAP does not. Now, a lot of that, if, you're, if you haven't owned an, uh, an Amazon Echo or Amazon Alexa, whatever you want to call it, uh, one of the first things you should know is if you want to add um, features and functionality, this is something called skills. Now, skills, they're available on Amazon's own store, and there are some unofficial ones you can install externally, but mainly, kind of the bulk, 95% of them, are on Amazon's own store. You go there, and almost all of them are free, and you get the Amazon um, Alexa skill uh, for this device to do certain commands and tasks. So, a number of things that you want the device to do that aren't readily available by default, you go on the Amazon store, you find the skill, and they've got the all got ratings and reviews and guides and tutorials, and you go there and you install those skills. So, at the moment, as I say, you can't access and play back via the Echo music, for example, that lives on your QNAP. Now, there are some workarounds, and before we get to the main one, uh, just talk about some of the ways that QNAP themselves have tried to bridge the gap. Because um, there are some apps out there that the um, Alexa will play on uh, will play uh, on the QNAP. So, for example, if you have a Kodi uh, device set up, there is a way to get the Amazon Echo to speak with Kodi that's displayed by the HDMI port on your QNAP and play that uh, content. But, to be perfectly honest, if you've got a NAS set up next to your TV via HDMI, there doesn't seem to be a huge amount of benefit to be able to say aloud in the room, pause, play, um, display the latest episode of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, because that's kind of, you're already in the room, so you're not really, I mean, if anything, it's going to feel slightly unnatural and unorganic, um, or inorganic even, to play back in that manner. And normally what you want is the ability to have that media play back. Now, uh, another way that QNAP have worked around this is using IFTTT, um, if this, then that. And if you go to um, IFTTT and look up QNAP, and have all of those skills listed, and then just control F on that page and look for the word Alexa. And there's about eight, maybe nine different um, recipes, as they call them, um, that you can get the Alexa to perform in conjunction with your QNAP. So some of them out there are playing music in audio station. Um, other ones are for shutting the QNAP down or getting information readily from the device, but very poor actual cohesion between them. So if you start using that recipe, IFTTT, to play back music on the um, audio station software from QNAP, setting it up is a little bit finickety. Firstly, you have to obviously set up an account with IFTTT. On top of that, you have to access um, the Alexa, get the skill installed, and then on um, to communicate the IFTTT application. On top of that, the command is very straight. It's kind of like um, Alexa ask IFTTT um, to play latest playlist. And even then, you can't really call 
any song you want. You can only really retrieve playlists. And, you know, even worse than that, getting it to play back from the Amazon Echo device is pretty poor indeed, because most of the time, because of the command is so long, it generally only gets about halfway into the command before it loses track of what it's supposed to do, so it's by no means reliable. Now, there is one way that I've found so far that is probably the most reliable of all to get music to play back from your QNAP NAT, and it's a lot of work, to be honest, um, and it will cost you a tiny pinch of money. What you need to do is first look for a skill uh, on the Amazon Alexa uh, available database uh, on Amazon's website called My Media. Now, My Media is an unofficial application, and it costs about I think two to five dollars a year. Um, you get that installed, but there is a seven-day free trial, so definitely get that. Next, what you need to do, because if remember you you want to get the music on your NAS, not on a PC, because the My Media skill application is designed for all the music that lives on your PC to be readily accessible as a DLNA server to the Amazon Echo. But what you want is the QNAP. So next, move over to the QNAP and install a virtualization station or container stations, but more appropriately, go with virtualization station to keep it nice and easy. Most modern QNAP uh, devices give you the ability to set up a completely free and very fast set up Linux VM, and that's what I would advise, but you can install the Windows VM if you like, and you are gonna have to go back to my other videos, uh, Span TV, uh, to show you how to set up a VM for the first time. And once you've got that VM set up, then um, create, um, um, go to the Amazon store, get that MySQL application, follow the link um, to their own website and download the software for PC or Mac, um, or Linux of course, to install on that VM to create your My Media, uh, media Station. From that, then go back into the QNAP software, um, create um, a, um, a network accessible drive of your media, and then in the VM, find that network accessible drive via the IP, it will be localized. Then, go back into the Echo and set up the My Media skill uh, with the VM that you set up on the QNAP. The two will find each other and then you will be able to ask the Echo to play back that music for you. Now, once again, cannot stress this enough, that is a lot of work, so I hope you're going to be taking this seriously because one, you're going to have to partition some of the hardware inside with virtualization station to set up that VM. I'm hoping to get a whole guide put together for you very soon, showing you the breakdown of how to do this. Two, you're going to have to leave that VM on all the time, which means some of those system resources, one of the cores, some of the memory, are constantly going to be adapt and adapted and kept by that VM. That's the other reason I recommend creating a Linux-based VM, and it is incredibly user-friendly do take my word for it on that. Setting up a Linux VM on a QNAP is actually easier than setting up a virtual Windows machine or any other. Plus, of course, all the hardware is inside. If you've gone for a 253A like I did for this, it is very quick indeed. But apart from that, we really are hoping to see more innovation between um, the likes of uh, the Amazon Echo and QNAP because it seems alien to me that you can't just say the music that's on there, blah, 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 play this, and it plays out via these speakers. Because the, the, the device, the Amazon Alexa is a good device, but if you've owned a NAS for a long time, such as I, and also if you've you know, an extensive library of music, it seems alien and stupid to me that I can't just output it from the device. Moreover, for those of you out there that will pop down in the comments that if you subscribe to Amazon uh, Music or Amazon Music Unlimited, if you've got uh, Prime or not Prime specifically, yes, you can get a $2.99 a month subscription to Amazon Prime Music Unlimited. But before you say to me, oh, and you can also upload some tunes, they've now disabled the ability to upload music to Amazon Music. You can no longer upload your music to the Amazon Music platform. And even then, it was only 250 songs. So by only one of these, you are effectively partitioning your localized music away from cloud-based music services, again, such as Spotify and, of course, Amazon Music. But overall, I do think the two platforms, QNAP uh, and Amazon Alexa, do not sync very well indeed. I hope things change in the future. 
and do check out some of those recipes on IFTTT. But in the meantime, I would recommend going for Google Home. We have a whole video coming up on that and showing you how those platforms come together. And of course, the Synology version of this video. And I've got good news for you Synology users out there. But otherwise, don't forget to click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I need this channel to grow and I need your help to do it. So do click subscribe and like and don't forget to bung down a comment. If you need help on buying the right NAS or some more advice about this device, then do go down there to nascompares.com. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.